I built this pretty cool computer arm that holds my shop computer, which also runs the CNC router. It's height adjustable and movable, and I also built some CNC specific features into it, like turning the machine on from here, manual dust collection for cleaning a part or whatever, and some more stuff. Using the CNC router now with this setup is super comfortable, but at the same time, when I'm doing something else that takes a bit longer, I can sit down and use it like this. This setup uses a parallelogram mechanism for the height adjustment mounted to the side of the machine base where it can swivel and rotate. The height is secured with this clamping bracket and when I open this, the weight is held in place by a bunch of springs which prevent it from just crashing down. At the end of the video I'll have some rough plans and part dimensions available if you want to build this for yourself. But first of all, let's build it. It's a couple days ago and I'm about to start this project. As you can see, the computer still is on a separate card. Since you've already seen the thinnest thing, there's no more need to talk about it. So let's start cutting some parts. I'm probing X, Y and Z. Change to the first tool and off we go. The next tool needs to be measured first and with my new tool changer, this happens all automatically. This is the first project I'm doing with the automatic tool changer I made and one thing for sure, I can never go back to manual tool changing anymore. This is just so nice. So here's an uncut but sped up shot of making two of the parts for this project. Boring. What I did before cutting parts is make this quick little prototype out of scrap wood to test the parallelogram mechanism and the springs. I posted this in an Instagram story and got the best response that it kind of looks like a dinosaur and yeah, it kind of does. One part needs machining on both sides and therefore I used a whole grid in my new spoilboard that I made in another video. For some parts that are a bit thicker I glued two scrap pieces of plywood together. I didn't cut all the way through because then the work holding is easier and cutting the parts out on the bandsaw and flush trimming is done quickly. Most parts also get a round over which takes care of flush trimming at the same time. Okay, got most of the plywood parts finished, now I can screw them together. I let a bright point drill bit spin in reverse to transfer the whole location. These two pieces now get connected with an M12 bolt through the middle. This should align all pieces and I can screw them tight now. But somehow I screwed up the length because there's not enough thread left for the lock nut. But easy fix. Get the two beefy hinges finished. They move freely, have basically no radial play, but a little bit of axial play, but that's good, so it won't end up binding. And I can still relatively easily take it apart again for assembly later. Next then is adding these plates on the side. The easiest way to get the alignment right was to unscrew the other parts again. So now I can properly clamp it to a table. As you can see, I screw up the bolt length on these parts as well. But here I have the pivot points for the parallelogram arms and let's make the next. A scrap piece of hardwood works perfectly for this. I cut it into strips so that three layers roughly make 50 millimeters of thickness. The middle layer needs some special cutouts for the springs. I sandwiched the middle sections between two other pieces and glued them together. It will be a small challenge to keep everything straight because with these cutouts I made, this piece doesn't want to be straight anymore. After the glue dried, I cut to final dimension. Now I mark all the hole positions again. And then drill holes for the pivots and holes for bolts that will hold the springs. One half of the spring holes I cut threads into. Now before this can move, there needs to be a big round over. This hole saw has about the right size for roughing. A simple chick out of scrap wood and the disc sander take care of the rest. Nice. 
This head goes in the machine base and this carries the screen and keyboard. Unfortunately, there was too much play and I plucked and recut the holes. This is working, but obviously it can't hold any weight at the moment. And I need to add the springs. The springs I have on hand came from a broken outdoor lounger. They are quite short, but hooking two of them together makes them long enough for what I need. And as you can see, I'm adding four pairs. Assembly is straightforward, spring into the cutout, bolt through the hook and into the wooden threads. At the fourth spring, I have a through hole cause this bolt double functions for holding the locking bracket. No need to tighten them very hard just to make sure they don't move anymore. Getting the other springs in place is a bit tricky because they don't want to stay hooked together without tension. To summarize, it was a pain in the ass. But it worked. Springs are installed, I jammed some wood in between there to keep them tensioned and wow, there will be some force in this mechanism. The first bolt was easy but with the way I sized things there's always tension on the springs so... <sighs> Okay, now it stays up on its own and also springs back, that's good, but the whole assembly that will be mounted here weighs about 8 kilos. I have 3 kilos to test here and it sags down quite a bit already, but that's the best I could do with stuff I had on hand. What's actually holding the weight then is this locking bracket with a wing nut here for now. And now this is strong. It could still add more springs, but maybe later. For now, let's focus on making the part that gets mounted here. This assembly is kind of a weird shaped box that I glued together. It will make sense in a second. The second piece and especially these edges here need to line up pretty well with the first one. The slots are for mounting the screen and here's a place for my hand wheel. The flat surface for the keyboard is an old piece of particle board that I glued some edge bending to. Ah, standing desk height, so much better. Stuff is mounted and it works, but it's not good enough. You maybe can't see it in the video, but this is not straight anymore. This maybe shows it a bit better. There's quite a bit of movement in there. So yeah, quite a few problems and I'm definitely at the limit of what's possible with just wood in this kind of construction. Multiple problems, starting with this plate down here that's screwed to here. These four screws are just not enough. I need to replace them with dowels and securely glue these parts together. Then the through holes and the arms for the M10 bolts, they're just not precise enough, there's too much play. And maybe only having two of these brackets down here at the, let's call it anchor part, wasn't such a good idea. I also replaced the screws in there with dowels and glued this together. Let's see if that helps. And fun fact, the springs are pretty much useless now. I'm holding the weight at the moment. Yeah, let's see if I can do something about there. So before I move on and wiring stuff up, I need to beef up the mechanism with some steel. I turned a bunch of bushings, pressed them into all major joints and glued all parts together with dowel reinforcement. It's a day later and I'm back here again. The steel definitely helped. There's still quite a bit of movement in the mechanism, but with the amount of joints and the leverage, that's just inevitable. As long as it's straight now, I don't care. And I also doubled the amount of springs, so now they actually do something. Installing the arm assembly with now 9 spring pairs instead of 4 was a different challenge. It takes about 20 kilos to pull them this far apart. And with 9 of them in here, you know there's some force going on. Alright, computer is running, machine control works as well. Next is making parts for the additional buttons I want to install. The front also gets some nice engravings. Installing the buttons then is straightforward.
The wiring is more or less straightforward. Some of the buttons get connected to the according wires from the controller and 12 volt to light them up. The two 30 volt buttons get connected to the wires that will switch to relays. What happens when you accidentally use a 12 volt switch for two 30 volts? Well, it blinks once and then smells. Oops. Okay, this here switches a relay for the dust collector. The CNC machine switches the same relay, but I turn it on manually quite often. This turns on a light in the enclosure. However, the enclosure doesn't exist yet, so for testing only a light bulb. And this here switches a relay that turns on the whole CNC machine. And then also these buttons light up. I like this quite a lot. This for starting a program, for stopping, for manual tool change and obviously in case of shit. The last addition I want to make are two simple drawers underneath here for wrenches and other random tools. The side pieces get a slot and holds to mount them from below. The drawer slides are just thin strips of phenolic resin coated plywood. I cut a slot down the center which will be useful later. It just gets screwed into the data of the other strip and the ones that are already in the frame pieces. The drawer boxes are just scraps of plywood glued together which are then glued to an oversized bottom and flush trimmed. I install two small bolts in the drawer and together with the stop slot in the slides this prevents the drawer from falling out. Screwing on the front and they're done. So far so good. Next I took everything apart again to finish it up with paint and varnish. Here I'm adding some washers for the magnets in the handwheel so it has a better hold. And now it's complete. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have rough plans available on my shop. So no written instructions, just part dimensions and 3D files for all parts. So you could also do that with the CNC router if you want. And I also have a tiny little sneak peek for my next project because that involves all these nice wooden slabs. I'll see you there. <laughs>